Hi guys and welcome back to another IbraCorp video. Thanks for coming back and checking out the channel today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you guys here. Today, I wanna to show you guys plugins for traffic and why you need them and the best ones to pick. We'll give you the top five plugins that you should be using to help you get the best out of your traffic setup. Of course, depending on your environment as well. As the pilot program of traffic is deprecated, plugins are now independently used and are much easier to configure to have them ready to go for your setup. They can provide a lot of functionality and a lot of different options for those who wanna help customize and grow their traffic instance. So without further ado, let's just get stuck into it. So guys, here we are on the plugin catalog for traffic. And as you can see, there is a large list of plugins that we can use and they'll offer various different things to our traffic setup. So I'm gonna pick one of the top five that we are suggesting today. And then I'm gonna show you how to install that in traffic. And then we'll basically just show you all the other plugins that you should go for as well. Now, definitely one of the most important that we'd recommend is the traffic real IP plugin. Now this is really beneficial, especially when you're using something like Cloudflare because Cloudflare will mask the root origin IPs of your clients, where we want the real IPs. So to get that, we install this plugin. So let's go ahead and click on install plugin. Now traffic's really good. They've given us a quick snapshot on how to get this going. And I'm gonna show you what it all means. So basically the start here, we have the file, the YAML. We wanna copy that. That's if you're followed our setup to set up your traffic. Of course, you may be using a different setup. Now, the most important thing to note here is that it says it goes into our traffic static configuration. Now, that means it's our main traffic configuration file. The dynamic configuration is that other file that we have, of course, that will update on the fly when you need it. So first and foremost, we need to grab this one here. And here we are on Code Server. If you guys haven't seen our video on Code Server, be sure to check that out. It's really, really handy. As you can see under the forwarded headers, we've actually got trusted IPs here listed. Now, this is part of our Cloudflare IPs. And we can do it this way, or we can do it with the plugin, which is what we're showing you today. So at the very bottom of this file, we'll paste in the command that it gave us on that other screen. Keep in mind, once we start adding more plugins, you don't need to be adding these two headers again. You can just copy from the, obviously the name of the plugin, which we'll show you as we go along. So the first one we've got is traffic real IP. Go ahead and click save and make sure you save that. And once you're done, restart your traffic container. Any changes made in the static file require a restart of the container. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we've restarted traffic and we can confirm that traffic is back up now so that this plugin has been loaded. So now we can move on to the next step, which is putting our dynamic config in here. So let's click copy and back in code server, we can see we have our traffic YML, which like I said, is the main static config file. Now this file is a dynamic file, fileconfig.yml. Now, the section we wanna be under is middleware. So as you can see, we have auth, security headers, and gzip. So right underneath that, I'm gonna go ahead and add this one, except we don't need the two initial headers. They're already there, so let's get rid of those. But the first thing you'll notice is, of course, that the indentation is incorrect. Because the name of the plugin should be lined up with the rest of them, we'll just need to adjust that. And with the control and then the right closed bracket and left bracket, we can easily shift that around. So what we wanna do is move that over to underneath gzip and that will line it up perfectly well. Go ahead and click save. Now, as this is a middleware, the next thing we really wanna do is add this into the static file and allow it to filter over all of our traffic. So in our static file, if you go to the HTTPS and under middlewares, you can see we have security headers there and gzips there as well. I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna add traffic real IP and at file. Okay, now that's referencing our file that's here so they can pull in this real IP plugin. Now, what we're doing here is saying we wanna apply this middleware to all connections via HTTPS. If you only want to apply it to one container or one app, then you would add it as a middleware under that app. Now, once we've done that, let's go ahead and restart traffic again so that it can pull through this static config change that we just applied. Now guys, that is essentially installing the plugin. Some settings and instructions will change, of course, depending on which plugin you get. Now here's our other four that I'd really recommend you guys check out. Obviously one is fail to ban. Now that just helps add another layer of security for your setup. Now the instructions for the fail to ban plugin are a little longer and comprehensive. So that will obviously take a little bit more time. But again, 
the essential configuration is you're going through what it's giving you. And it's pretty straightforward and gives you another way to help protect your self-hosted instance. Now, another one which is popular is the Log4 Shell plugin. Now, obviously this is a large vulnerability that hit last year or so. Now, this plugin will essentially help you cover yourself for that vulnerability as well. Now, it gives you a couple of different things. You can add labels to apply this Log4 Shell vulnerability scanner, or we can add the middleware directly into our static file like I showed you just before. The next plugin we would recommend is the Deny IP plugin. Now, this is something that you can also accomplish if you're using something like Cloudflare, but I believe it limits you to a certain number of rules. I can't remember exactly. But if you didn't have that option, maybe you're not even using Cloudflare, this is a valid option you can use. So we can block based on the geolocation of the IPs coming through. Very similar thing, we put the static file config there as well. And then we also put the dynamic config as well. Now, another one we recommend is Simple Cache. Now, there was another cache one on there that might be a little intense if you're not sure how to go through it. This one's a lot easier and gives you the same functionality. Basically, it'll allow traffic to cache responses on your disk. Now, this can speed up the process quite a bit and allow it to respond quickly to requests that are quite frequent. But pretty handy and pretty straightforward to set up as well. You've got your middleware and you have your static config there as well. Now, the last one we'll recommend, since we have recently touched the subject only two weeks ago, is the Theme Park plugin. Now, this plugin, like I said in that original video, if you haven't seen it, will automatically apply themes on the rewrite level. So it will rewrite the HTTP pages, and this will help you apply themes across from the top level of traffic down to all the applications that support it. So that's another way to go ahead and do it as well. Be sure to check that out and support the project as well. So guys, that's traffic plugins for you. Thanks for tuning in today. Really appreciate having you guys here and I hope it helped you out. If it did, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comments below? We'd love to have a read as well. Thanks guys and we'll see you in the next Ibracorp video.